Hello Makers and welcome back to Spectiva Studios. It's good to have you here. You know, every artist has stories of projects that they started but never really came to conclusion because for whatever reason, it just didn't work. Now, I have shared in the past, I have an actual drawer in my studio that is labeled things to be burned someday. And it's, uh, it's full of some failed projects. And so, as any kind of artist, not everything we do is going to be successful. We're going to have to learn from our experiences in some cases. That said, when I'm working with paper art, yeah, there's not a lot of reclamation. I've talked in the past about some ways we can use old, wasted projects to create new projects. But if I'm working on paintings, especially canvases that I've either stretched or purchased pre-stretched, I'm going to be loath to throw them away just because what I started painting on it didn't work out. And that's really what we're talking about today. Now, here in front of me, I have a project like that. It's something I've worked on in the past. It was really a, an experiment of blending colors, and it served its purpose. But the, the simple reality is, is that I don't need it. I, I, I'm not going to put this on a wall anywhere. And instead of just tossing this in the bin, which, you know, could be one option, but then I'd have to buy another canvas, what can I do to reclaim this canvas and use it to create another project? And by the way, this is nothing new. Artists have been doing this for centuries at this point because materials were dear and expensive. So I want to share with you just some quick tips on how I can reclaim this and get it ready to go in the future. Now, one of the bigger challenges I'm going to run into right now is that, of course, you know, what do I paint over this to make it ready to go? And it depends, of course, what I want to be able to do in the future. One option, if I wanted to have a black canvas to start from, then painting this a flat black would work really well. But if I wanted to restore to something that looked pretty much like a standard white canvas, what are my options? Well, I'm going to share with you a couple things that I've done in the past that work out really well. And the first of them is turning to a good white paint. Now, I have an apple barrel acrylic white here. It's, uh, it's a very good covering paint, as we've talked in the past. One of the things that's great about white paint is it's full of titanium dioxide, uh, which is pretty opaque when you put it on a surface like this. Now, I'm also going to talk about how we're going to refinish this, uh, this surface. But to begin with, if I were to start here, and I'm going to, by the way, I'm going to take advantage of uh, tools that will really do what I need to do here. And I'm going to be using a little paint roller. Now, this might be a little bit bigger than what we need. It's what I had. Um, and it's got a fairly even nap on here, although you could go with a sponge roller. And the reason I'm doing this is I don't want to have brush marks on my brand new canvas when I'm ready to restart with it. And so this is one great way to get that out of the way. So I'm going to just dump a little bit of paint on, uh, on my canvas here. Come on, you can do it. There we go. And let me just get a line in here like this. That should be sufficient for now. And uh, I'm going to start the process of just getting this rolled in here. And again, what we're trying to do is just get an even coat. That's the objective overall, is just to get something even. And again, the roller's going to help us to avoid brush marks. Although there's a huge lump of some nasty paint there. That's not going to work for us. There we go. And I will just mention because, you know, Taking a, a roller and getting it all covered with paint uh, is, uh, you know, you got to clean this later or maybe toss it if you're not planning on cleaning it. If you have a whole bunch of canvases that need to be reclaimed, I would suggest doing them all roughly the same time. Let's get a little bit more paint onto our canvas here. And again, take it easy on this. We'd rather have add a little bit more paint than have too much and try to figure out what to do with it. But as you can see, pretty easily, I hope, we're getting to a point where it is very easily covering up the paint, the painted surface underneath it here. Now I will mention one other thing when we are working with a pre-used canvas like this one here is that you may have paint underneath here which has some relief which means it comes up a little bit off the surface and in which case even putting a coat of white on, on it like this is not necessarily going to uh, make that relief go away. So, it, by the way, it could be a really cool effect if that's what you're looking for, but just bring that up. Now, you may not be able to see it on camera, but I can still see hue coming through here. There's still some colors that are coming through, so it's not going to be a, a final coat in this case, which is fine for us because what we want to do next, after we let this dry, is to put on an additional coat, which will bring everything back to basically a factory reset. So let's wait for this to dry, and I'll come back in just a moment and show you how to do that. All right, welcome back. So easy enough, give this a few minutes to do its dry, it's uh, nothing, nothing's tacky. And the reason I wanted to let it dry is I have to put another coat on now, and I don't want the coats to mix with each other. And uh, this will make more sense in just a second. Now, another thing to understand also about this is this is really an obscuring coat, right? We've gone in here, we've covered up the color. That's the objective with a thin layer of this white paint. But when we buy canvases or when we create our own canvases, often what we also do to prepare them is we make sure that they have a good surface to paint on. 
something what we call toothiness, something that the paint can stick to. And for that, we're going to use gesso. Now I have my big bucket of gesso here. And if you haven't seen me work with Justin before, I'll leave, uh, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can see some of the projects we've worked on in the past. Now, what is gesso? Well, gesso is a surface. It's basically something that allows us to prepare painting surfaces, which do just what I was describing. It allows us to create something that the paint can easily stick to. And think about it, if you were painting a wall in your home, you might use primer. Well, primer serves a similar purpose. It's a covering layer, but it also provides something that the paint can adhere to, because if you paint directly onto the wall, chances are it won't. So we wanna make sure that we have something, in this case, that's not gonna necessarily fall off the wall, but we want to have something that will allow us to stick and stay on the canvas. So what I'm going to do here is something very similar to what I just did, is I'm going to take some of my gesso, and again, this is a big old bucket, so I'm going to try to be gentle in how I flow this across. And by the way, I'm using a completely different roller here. I'm not using the same roller, so I have two rollers I have to clean now, but this is going to make sense. And again, I would use a spongier nap if you don't want to get any kind of texture, but this is just going to allow me to come in here and again, get a nice, thin and even layer down using this roller. So what I'm doing now is I'm basically covering up my white layer, even though you can't really see that, with a gesso layer. Now, by the way, gesso is a lot of, a lot of what, what makes gesso gesso is there's kind of almost a glue aspect to it as well as a talc or chalk aspect. And so it's almost like putting a, well, that toothy surface, it's almost got a little bit of a texture that we can work with here. Let me just get up here. Now, I may, uh, I may poke at this a little bit, but and again, look at the nap of the rollers you're using. You don't want anything that's too deep because it will leave textures behind, which may be a great effect if that's what you're going for. But in this situation, yeah, we want to make it as smooth as possible. So I'm going to hit this a few times just to smooth it out, and uh, we'll make sure that things are ready to go. Okay, now as you might imagine, that was about as exciting as watching paint dry. But here we are. We finally uh, have a, a, a canvas that we can now reuse. So it has been reborn. And it's going to give us an opportunity to save some money, um, uh, save something from a landfill. But also, there was no need to throw it away in the first place. By resurfacing it, it gives us new life. And we can create a masterpiece now with this new canvas ready to go. Anyway, that's all I wanted to share with you today. Hopefully, you found this useful. And it's the kind of thing you can apply to your own artistic capabilities as we go through this. And by the way, if you're not already a member of our community, we'd love to have you there. It's, uh, it's an easy enough process. Just click on that subscribe link down below, and you'll be added. Hit the bell icon. We'll let you know whenever I drop a new video, which is every single Friday. Anyway, thank you so much for stopping by today. This is Spider. I'll see you next time.